right, sorry for the delay with a little computer technology issue. Uh, I'd like to call this evening's select board meeting. The date is May 4th, 2022. The time is 6.47 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Present in the room is myself, Dot Maggio, Stan Noga, Bruce Mello, Road Supervisor, Mark Bills, and cameraman from Pack TV, Josh. What's your last name? Morelli. 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 Okay. Um, at this time, we're going to take a look at review changes to the agenda, if any. Hi, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm here too, Mark Kirk. I was told to join at 640. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. I just looked at you and I, and we also have Mark Kirk from Cot Industries here in the, as a, a member of the scheduled member of the public. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I didn't want you to forget me. Should I go away for about 15 minutes or what? No. We can, we can. Change, we'll change the order of the agenda to make it convenient for you. We'll do the Before minutes later. later. Yeah. Okay. I don't care. Okay. All right, changes to the agenda. If any, I'm going to move item three, reviewing the previous minutes from April 20th, April 18th, and April 25th until after members of the public. I am also going to ask to add an executive session at the very end of the meeting before adjournment. Because there is a need to evaluate and discuss re recent concerns with the position of the treasurer for the town, a motion may be made at this time, is being made at this time, to go into executive session later during the meeting. The executive session can be held under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A.3 of the Vermont Statutes. No votes will be conducted while in executive session. Is there any other changes to the agenda that anyone would like to have made? I would like to add, I forgot, a discussion about the homestead rebate penalties for taxpayers. I got a call from Liberty um, Tax Center and they had a question. So I will put that under my select board chair report. And that is tax, a tax question. So I'm gonna add that. Any other changes besides moving the Minutes, the tax question, and having an executive session. Any other changes? Hearing none, we shall move on to scheduled members of the public. Scheduled is Mr. Mark R. Kirk of the COT system. He's here to talk about the consideration to purchase a program that for, would help us with uh, land records. So, Mr. Kirk, you'll have to speak up because we only have the microphone on the uh, computer helping us out today, but uh, you want to uh, explain to us and then also to those viewers who watch this on TV uh, about the program that you uh, sell and that guy suggested we use ARCA funds for. Thank you. Sure. Can you hear me all right? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So I can give you my one minute spiel. I can give you my three, five minute spiel. I can talk for half an hour if you want. So um, I can, I'll start off and just give you a little bit of background and then you can ask me whatever questions that you have. I uh, was there to visit your town um, yesterday. I met with Guy. I spent an hour or two there gathering information and um, I came up with some kind of ballpark pricing and a, a, a good estimate of what you guys are looking at and some options. Um, COT has been, COT Systems has been around for about 135 years. We were one of the first to develop a computerized land record management system. I have 60 plus towns in Vermont where we uh, have our system. Um, the CARES Act was a big one. I sold 23 systems two years ago during the CARES Act. 
And since then I put in another dozen or so, and now I have another dozen in the pipeline and would be glad to add you to that list. Um, I have quite a few customers around you that you can go see or talk to, um, but this is a big step for towns in Vermont, uh, the majority of whom don't have any kind of land record management system. At least you have NIMREC, which is, you know, pardon my expression, but at least it's half of the system. Um, but uh, the legislators are trying to make it easy for you guys to uh, fund this. And um, I've sold three in the past couple months using ARPA funds, seven last year in November just using ARPA funds. So I think that's a good direction for you guys to go if you have that money available to spend. Other towns are doing that. So, uh, with that, I guess I'll take a pause and see if I can answer any questions. We have a very small town of uh, 300 parcels of land. What estimates do you might you have for a program, your system for Brookline? Okay, so um, I've had other towns smaller than you that have bought systems and it's, you know, one part of it is about size, but the other part is about digitizing your records and getting them online because with COVID, you know, when all these offices were shutting around the state and, you know, attorneys couldn't get their business done, it became an issue, uh, no matter what your size, to get them online. But also, I think everybody will agree that at some point in the future, Every, all, all these towns are going to have to have their records online. It's just that's what's going to happen. So the sooner the better that you get these um, online, um, the better off you'll be. Uh, so I think that uh, looking at your situation in particular, what I found out from Guy was that you're in a great position because you have indexes in, in NIMRIC that are already available going back to, I think it was, let me look here, I have it. Um, bring up my spreadsheet here. Your index goes back to um, July of 1999 and your uh, images in, in, you've already scanned, your assistant clerk there has already scanned going back to 96. And so we can import all of those into your land record systems and almost from day one of implementing the system, uh, put those online. And that's a big advantage that you have. A lot of towns that I've sold systems to don't have any index and don't have any images. And so we have to either come in and scan those and index them for them, or they have to do it themselves. So you're already halfway home. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, what? Mark, how many, are there any towns in our vicinity in Wyndham County that have done this? Oh, quite a few. Um, I'm gonna have to go to my maps. Hang on a second. Possible rainbow. Uh. Okay, let me look at my maps here. So uh, Putney is one of the uh, towns that bought it under the CARES Act. Townsend just bought it, installed it in February. Newfane has been a customer for a long time. Uh, let me. Didn't you just put it in in Dover? Just put it in in Dover and Marlboro. Uh, Wilmington has been a customer for a while. Uh, uh, Whittingham, Whitingham uh, was one of the CARES Act ones. So you got, got quite a few around you.
Okay, thank you. When, when a transaction comes in to be recorded, does the basic process that the town clerk or assistant town clerk goes through vary from what they would normally do if we were tied in uh, or, or were making ourselves available of your service? How does it differ, the process? Uh, well, first of all, they would scan the document. So if it's a 10 page mortgage, they would scan those 10 pages and then they would go in and index it. And usually it's by grantor and grantee and the date, uh, well, this, the system assigns today's date unless you wanna change it. It uh, gives you a field to put in description of property and address if you want, or lot number, parcel number. Um, and then uh, it allows you to sign a book and page, the next one that's in sequence. And once you do all that, you just click a button that says, link it to this scanned image, and it's in the system. And available online to search seconds later. Some, a searcher in California could go online and see that document a few seconds after you click that button saying that, um, you know, I want to record this document. And the town clerk or assistant town clerk, the person in the municipality responsible for that function, still carries on the other per other other processing, uh, puts it in a book, creates a card, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, well, you don't have to create a card anymore because it's already you already have an index in our system, so people don't have to use cards after this. Uh, but yeah, that. Um, at the end of the month, they usually create a, you know, well, they have a day book, but then at the end of the month, they can print these out and put them into a, a binder that they can stick in the vault. So uh, people who come in and physically search it can see it. So any quote that you would provide us with would be uh, utilizing records that have been digitized already back to 1996 to the current time and forward, correct? Well, that's an option that you have. Um, so as I mentioned, um, again, I'm gonna have to look at my spreadsheet here because I do so many of these. Your index in NIMRX goes back to uh, 1999 and your scanned images go back to 96. So, uh, we can import all of those from your computer into our system and have them available uh, soon after you implement the system. So that, when you say them, you've made a point up front to distinguish between those back to 1999 and then those that are digitized to 96. Are you referring to that full range or just back to 1999? to grab records from Nimrock to import to your system. Yeah, so back to 99 to index and link them to images, and we can put the images from 99 to 96 in a folder in the system that people can look at, but because they don't have an index, they can't use the index to find them. And, and uh, what I told Guy was uh, he wanted to, best practices is to go back about 40 years so um, we looked at, you know, the option of indexing and scanning back to 1982. And then he had, what was it? All your loose books go back to 1948. And so I looked at cost, what it would cost to scan back to 1948 and index those for you as well. But uh -huh. that's something, I mean, you can do it however you want. And in fact, you can index and scan yourself going back. It's just, you know, a matter of preference. I have a question. Um, I know we have records that go back to the 1700s, I believe, here in town. So yep. I was under my impression that there was a limit to what physical scanning the clerks could do because the book pages do not come apart for her to do any scanning. So what would you, work, how would your process work with books of that type? Yep, so um, those are called, we call bound books. They're not okay. loose. 
can't take them apart. And those are difficult and um, expensive. And I have probably every year, I have 150 customers throughout New England towns. Um, and I probably have 10 or so every year that give us bound books. And they're complicated because a lot of times they don't have, you know, the original bound books, they don't have any replication of them, no microfilm or anything. And uh, we have to ship them to Columbus. We usually pick them up and deliver them and then either drive them or ship them back. And clerks get very nervous when they hear that about their bound books, historical books. Um, so we go through all kinds of gyrations. We've never lost a book, but that doesn't assuage the fears of town clerks who have to make that decision. But the process is uh, cumbersome in that we have to somehow get the books to Columbus where we have special bound book scanners. We have three of them. And uh, you have to turn the page, turn the book upside down on the scanner, take a digitized photo of it, take the book out of the scanner, turn the page, put it back down, take another digitized photo of it. So it's very manual and therefore very expensive. And we have a special, we have special scanners that do that. So to answer your question, we can go back and we've done it for many towns, go back all the way to day one, um, but it's, it's expensive and it's not like scanning your loose books where we can just take it out of the binder and put it in the hopper of a high-speed scanner, press a button, and have them go like, you know, crazy, 100 pages a minute through the scanner. Uh, but I would urge you to, um, you know, take small bites and get a system in and start at some level that you can uh, afford to go day forward and go back as far as you can. And then over the years, I tackle those more complex ones. And with the strategy of maybe five years from now, get all your records online. And to complicate matters a little bit more, I mean, you can put your town meetings online, you can put uh, lister cards, you can put your maps and surveys online. Uh, so. You can, in our system, uh, so your long-term strategy can involve putting many things online, uh, but it, um, it, it takes some effort. Uh, Mark, the, uh, the price of $17,000 just does, uh, does the non-bound books going back to 96 and uh, 99, is that correct? Right. Um, I don't know where you got the price for 17, but that's pretty accurate. I figure if you, uh, again, these are ballpark prices, uh, but if you bought the system for around uh, $6,000 and you imported all the um, images and indexes you have now on your computers, it would come to about seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. So with the bound, the bound ones, what, how much do they cost? I mean, is, is it by book? Is it by... Um, the what? You really speak up. Okay. The bound books. How do you get... Oh, the, the bound books. books. Yeah. yeah um, that gets complicated again because of the size and the number of pages per book. And um, some of... Sorry, what? I'm sorry, Mark. So you, so you kind of quote each of, if we wanted to do five this year or two this year, you would do a quote on those two bound books. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. And uh, to, to complicate it a little bit further is um, I have had two towns in the past uh, couple months where we looked at the images uh, that we would produce that, that the bound books were of such poor quality, they were so faded that we recommended that we didn't digitize them because the customer wouldn't be happy with those results. 
despite the fact that we could increase the resolution and we could do grayscale scanning and et cetera, et cetera, that would improve the image. They were so bad and, you know, faded and the edges were torn. And I mean, so we would look at each bound book and we would come back and tell you, uh, one, if we would recommend scanning it and two, uh, what that price would be. Have you looked at any of ours when you were here talking with No. Guy? Okay. No. And uh, one more question. Uh, all these other towns, there's seven of them, and this quarter is $17,000. You said we we're halfway there with NEMREC or whatever. Halfway, I guess, ahead of the game. Are we, uh, were the other towns a lot more expensive? Were they not prepared? It's not that it has anything to do with us, but uh, uh, how are they? Uh, compared to us is, in terms of setup for you to do it? I can't remember specifically, but most of the towns had NIMRIC indexes that we could import. Most of them didn't have images. So you're ahead there, you have images. And um, that's due to your assistant clerk there who's been scanning them patiently over the years, I guess. But to give you an idea, I went to Woodbury, a town um, north of Montpelier today, and they don't have anything. They don't have any indexes and any images. And to buy the system and for us to go back 40 years was $50,000. That's 50 versus your 17 to accomplish the same thing to give you an idea of what I mean when I say you're ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, so it, I have one last question, Mark, and that is following up on uh, what uh, Mr. Mello's question was, is pricing by page or by book? Uh, it's by page, but um, so again, more complexity here. Um, when I sold, those 23 systems to 23 towns using the CARES Act, we bundled them all together. And that gave us a discount that we could pass along to the towns because we could do training and implementation in groups and we could buy the scanners in groups, et cetera. And it was $5,300 a system to, for those 23 uh, customers. When I sold the seven in November, um, it was uh, $5,900 a system. So not quite the same discount, but pretty good. I sold a single one that didn't want to wait, and that was $6,800. So to buy the system, it depends on how many people I can get to buy it as a group. The same thing goes for the page. When I scan, if we send out a team from uh, Columbus, Ohio to do the scanning, if I can get a group of people, and last time it was 200,000 images. So if I can get 200,000 images in a week, group the towns, I get a certain rate. If I have to come out and scan one town, and then that pe those people have to go back to Columbus, it costs a lot more. If I get someone to come out for three weeks, like we did with the CARES Act, it's a lot less. So the pricing is not static, uh, and it, there's no standard price per page. Um, it depends on several factors. Will that packaging be with other towns in Vermont, other towns in New England, or other towns across oh. the country? Yeah, Vermont. Vermont, okay. Yeah, I have, um, I have two weeks. So to back up for a minute, uh, we're in 22 states and there's lots of ARPA money out there. And um, we're inundated with work. So today uh, we're nine months out to come and scan anywhere. The... I had two weeks in this summer that I could fill in Vermont and uh, to come and scan, and those are already filled up. I already have that many customers 
uh, that want it. So even if today you gave us an order and said, I want to, I want you to come out and scan, we're probably talking about December or January or something before we're going to be out there. Um, that's just the competition um, and the reality. One last question. I've been a user of your system as part of my past employment. And it was helpful to have uh, tax maps available through the system as well. We only have, since we're so small geographically, five tax maps, a total of roughly 530 parcels. Would the base cost, I mean, you, you set that pretty much at around or about 6,000. Would adding that additional component of tax maps significantly increase the cost? Uh, no, it doesn't change the cost at all. So, um, no, you buy the system and you can put whatever you want on it at some point, and it takes a lot of storage space. We're going to increase your monthly in. Uh, so, you have a monthly maintenance of, say, 180 dollars a month so you buy the system for six thousand and it's 180 a month for maintenance that includes customer service your storage space etc if you added so many gigabytes uh and you need a lot to add a lot then we might bump up that monthly figure by five or ten dollars a month but that's very unusual so if you want to add tax maps you can go in and create an index and scan those yourself and add them yourself, and it doesn't change the price at all. Um, if you want us to do it, then of course you've got to pay us to do it. Uh, but from you know day forward, I've had people add survey maps and I've had at, had them add other things, plus add another twenty years of land records, and it doesn't change their monthly maintenance at all. Um, I had one unfortunate customer here in Connecticut who bought a plat map scanner and they um, scanned in 6,000 maps at a very high resolution. And uh, they went from five gigabytes of storage to 70. <laughs> so we turned around and said, you got to pay us $50 more a month for all the storage space that these maps took up. Uh, but, you know, so anyway, I don't know if I answered your question, but you can add whatever you want to the system. It doesn't cost anything except for your labor. What does the so-called maintenance, uh, what is it comprised of specifically? What occurs in that maintenance? So, uh, The, the maintenance is for upgrades and et cetera. And we sign five-year contracts. So if your maintenance is $180 a month, that's going to be for five years. It won't change. And after five years, it may go up 2 or 3%. You know, who, who knows? But um, it covers customer service. And uh, unfortunately, in this marketplace, what we find is that we do lots of customer service. That the uh, you know clerks call up all the time, say, I have a problem with this, or I want to know how to do this, or whatever. So um, there's a lot of customer service interaction. And um, that's what that is primarily for, to cover our cost to service that customer. And so it's not only maintenance, it's actually service and maintenance, apparently. Yep, right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, I was wondering if you uh, would please, um, I know we talked about it here, we all took some notes, but if you wouldn't mind sending us something in writing with proposals as to if you did this, this might be the cost or part B, would, this would be the situation. So I was wondering if you could send us something in writing um, so that as we get into later on the summer when we just start to budget out the ARPA money, um, we would have a, an idea of you know, what this might cost if we did this or what that might cost. So if you could possibly send us a proposals 
for your for your yep. system purchase and the gigabytes and the monthly maintenance. This way we would have it on paper as well as what we recall from tonight. Yes, so uh, here's what I can do for you. There's two routes that I take. Um, the first one is I can give you a ballpark estimate, which will be pretty close based on the information that I gathered today. And I'll send that, um, I can send that to Guy because I told him I would with the spreadsheet with all the volumes and et cetera and pricing. That's based on certain assumptions. As I said, I'm going to base it probably on five towns that will be grouped with you. And so you'll get the 6,000 price instead of the 6,800 price. And so, um, you know, it, it'll give you a good idea to uh, close enough. There are some other assumptions in there because we've been raising prices lately. So I'm going to give you the pricing that I have today, but six months from now, who knows what it'll be, but um, all of that uh, will be, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. Right. You said that you were able to start for nine months. So uh, No, I can start. We can start in 30 days if you bought the system and all you did was migrate all your NIMRIC data into the system. I'm, you know, I'm talking about nine months if we're going to come there and scan an index going back from uh, 99 or 96. Got it? So, uh, I would urge you to get the system as soon as possible and start, you know, put in all those, all that data and all the images that you have and put them online and go day forward scanning and putting, you know, your records into the system. And then, you know, nine months from now, tackle, or we'll, we will come in and tackle the other um, re uh, records going back. Okay. So my strategy that I recommend to towns is they take that ballpark estimate and they go to their board and they say, you know, can I have 30,000 for of your ARPA funds to do this project? And if they say yes, then I'll put together a proposal. For me to put together a proposal, I have to um, fill out a bunch of forms. I have to find out what you have for hardware there that, you know, I have to go to PCs and I have to check and see what the CPUs are of your PCs, the RAMs, the operating system. Believe it or not, I've been to some towns and they're still on Windows 7. And I say, no, 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 you know, you can't buy our system because Microsoft doesn't support Windows 7. You have to upgrade to 10. I have to run an internet check to make sure that you have high speed internet or that it's high speed enough that you can communicate with our data set. I have to go through all these hoops before I can give you a contract. So that's why I say, I like to give an estimate first. And if you come back to me and say, yeah, that estimate of 30,000 or whatever fits in our budget, then I'll go through and do all these other steps and get, get you a contract. If you want, I can skip all that and go and put Guy to work and whoever is there, or I can come back at some point in the next week or two and get all this information to give you a contract. It's up to you. We're not ready for contract. But we're, we're not ready for contract. We will not be doing uh, ARPA planning for a month or two yet. Yeah, so we'll take the first strategy. I'll send Guy an estimate, a ballpark estimate with my spreadsheet and all my assumptions. And that'll give you a pretty good idea of, of what it'll be. And then if at, you know, a couple months from now, your board says, okay, we have the money in ARPA, give us a contract, then I can start the next steps. Should that be copied to you? I'm assuming he's talking yeah, to would you. Would you yeah. also copy it to myself? Yeah. You have my email address. Yes. Dot Maggio, D Maggio, dot for playing VG. Yeah. Yep, right. I'll copy it too. All right, excellent. Anything else, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Mark, thank you so much for explaining that a little bit more clearly this evening. Um, it's an interesting system. Uh, we will look forward to, you know, reviewing what you have to say and, and talk to Guy about it a little bit more. 
But thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm sorry I couldn't meet with you yesterday. As I said, I'm limiting my outdoorness this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, thank you for inviting me and good luck. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Very, very good. Appreciate that. All right. I'm going to uh, go back to our uh, minutes. And uh, one, one second. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, I raised my hand uh, because I had some questions. And as a non-resident, it may not be appropriate for me to ask any questions. So I decided to wait until after that fellow had left. Okay. Would you entertain a question for me? Absolutely, sir. Yeah, Peter. I spent 20 years as the CEO of a software company that sold my software to the building trade. And uh, that was a sales presentation. And it had in it uh, veiled threats that if you don't hurry up, it'll cost more, et cetera. And everybody else is doing it. Right. And that kind of stuff makes me nervous. Because what happens with software is it goes obsolete really fast. Exactly. I know. And they got to sell you a new one. Once they got the camel's nose in the tent, you're stuck. So it might be fine. All these towns might be uh, making out like bandits this way. But the system he describes is not complicated. He's going to make it sound like rocket science. 70 huh. gigabytes. I have. Uh, in my wallet, two chips the size of your thumbnail that each hold uh, 190 gigabytes with all my work on them. I've got four terabytes in the cellar. I got two terabytes on the machine I'm talking to you on. And for them to claim that, that what did he say? It was like 40 gigabytes more was going to cost another another 50 bucks a month or something? That's crazy. Oh. That's absolutely outrageous. I couldn't believe he would, he would say that with a straight face. So obviously this guy from Ohio thinks that you're a bunch of picks. Uh, I also wanted to caution you that if you have a lot of images, uh, there could be incompatibilities that they don't notice until after the contract signed and suddenly Everything's got to be scanned all over again. Oh, I've been messing with images quite a lot recently. And, uh, and there are compatibility issues. And there are issues of images that are what they call lossy. Some images are bigger and have a lot more detail. Some images have a much lower resolution. And they're not satisfactory. These people obviously know what they're doing about that, I'm, I hope. But if you're going to sign a contract on this stuff, that kind of detail has to have been established. You have to know that the images that you already have are going to fit in the system. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm, oh. uh, if I go any further, I'll start ranting like John Belushi. <laughs> that, Peter, that that's, a, that's immensely helpful. I, I, I think I was, from a gut perspective, was sensing exactly what you're saying, but not quite to the detail. I really appreciate your sharing that with us. Yeah. Anybody who's going sure. to tell you that's going to help you out if you hurry up, run away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm also wondering, are there any other companies there that are. are compatible? Two or three. That, yeah. So we couldn't just and go. You know, I have to ask, is it, really, is it really such a big deal? What if you didn't do it? Who's going yeah. to give a crap? That's right. Don't call up and say, "Well, I can't get this real estate stuff online." Fine, come down to the office. Yeah, your client will have to pay you a little bit for windshield time. Yeah, right. <laughs> but this is, right. this is this whole context just bothered the hell out of me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll shut up. I'm totally out of order. No, I, again, thank you very much. Uh, you know, if we didn't okay. do it because of Peter, how much more money did we save by by his recording fee for every week? <laughs> How much is it worth that uh, we we just the information that we just got from him? Yeah, yes, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So thank you, Peter. All right, I'm going to move on to the uh, agenda. We're going to go back and review 
and or review and approve minutes from the regular meeting on April 20th, 2022. Does anybody have any changes for uh, page one? Anybody have any changes for page two? Uh, let's yeah. see. Yes, uh, under discuss status of class two and bridge work report. Uh, I think I indicated that Mr. Clark uh, emailed me back indicating there were no uh, projects currently to be done. So if that, that, that could be at Mr. Clark emailed Stan indicating uh, no active work currently being done. Got it. Uh, Go ahead. Under uh, discuss status of construction, inspector bids from Zoom meeting with Margo of WRC on 418. Uh, it's, so that's dealing with construction inspector. And then the very first line, Mr. Noga explained that it was too costly to pursue. Uh, I would suggest, and if I, if I messed up in my statement, I apologize immensely to you, Peter, which I probably did, but it was actually the construction project itself that was cost prohibitive at this time, as opposed to the construction inspector bid. So I guess what I would like to suggest is on the very first line under the beginning of that paragraph title, if you could kindly, uh, after the word, Noga explain that. Uh, the project itself. In it, I'm sorry? I just put in the project itself. Correct, that's good. That's good. Okay. And then I had one other, very the, it's the uh, second line from the bottom of page two. I would simply ask that the word had, H-A-D, be replaced by may be. May be elevated. Yeah. Because we, we weren't, weren't guaranteed that it was going to reach 40,000, but the range of potential over cost of costs, depending on what the market did, could get it to possibly 400,000. So if we put may be, Instead well, of said, uh, add, that, that would make it elevate. more accurate. Thank you. How about could elevate? All right, page three. Does anybody have any changes for item page three, Mr. Noga? Yes, at the top of the page, first paragraph, I'm going to suggest that uh, uh, that in the next to last sentence, everything after the word machinery be simply removed. State labor and machinery. And then add in a credit situation. Set it to both and explain that the cost of state labor and machinery in a credit situation. In a credit situation. Uh, in a credit situation. Yeah, and that, and that could be, period. Could be reduced. Uh, well, that's, that's the ultimate result. Yes. If you want to add that in, that's even better. You're alert as ever. Well, it was about that cost could be reduced if residents would take some of the cleanup, you know, to take for firewood and stuff. Well, that's the part that, that the, the fact that people are going to possibly be available. Uh, that was just a thought that I should never have stated because it, is, it would be just a, a total sideline. The trees need to be removed in order to make space available for the construction of the building. Uh, my, my not thinking that there's someone who's taking very important notes, uh, I went and casually offered that maybe the town could dispose of the wood by letting citizens use it for firewood. But that, that act of allowing citizens to do that does not diminish the cost to the town. So that's well, why I'm asking that to that be deleted. That whole sentence uh, sets you up in a strange way. Would you like to say the whole thing? Send it to both? 
Well, now you're going to challenge my thinking, and that's dangerous at this point in the evening. So, <laughs> well, I have to follow the logic here. It's okay, the all right. Explain, uh, explain that the cost of state labor and machinery, comma, in a credit situation, what? Or explain without okay, that. Right. Explain the cost of state labor and machinery in a credit situation. Uh, let's see. I guess maybe the thing that... Uh, Okay, so I, 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 yeah, what you're saying is true. Uh, I guess the way to end that statement, that, that paragraph, is to indicate Mr. Noga found the verbiage in the proposed project contract and forwarded it to both Ms. Mar uh, Gia and Mr. Hunt for their review. Period, and, and that should cover that. that Mr. Ogan, I'm sorry, I got a call from my wife on the road, but it says, uh, found the verbiage in the contract and sent it to both Mr. Hunt and Ms. Gia. Correct. That, uh, that will serve the purpose of that. Thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, as we continue on, any other changes to page three? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Down on uh, where it says MRGP annual report. In where you start the parentheses with the letter A, the symbol uh, and symbol, and then R, that and symbol should be the letter N as in Nancy. So it's A as an Apple, N as in Nancy, R as in Ralph. Oh, Agency of Natural Resource. Oh. And, and the next line down, the same thing with that A and symbol in R. It's, it's A as an Apple, N as in Nancy, B, R as in Ralph. It's a, it's, a, it's a department of Vermont, the Agency of Natural Resources, and they go by the abbreviation ANR. Um. I'm not sure where you mean. When that happens, it's usually because there's a glitch in the HTML because the ampersand is, is stands for something else in HTML code. But all I have here is A and R watershed management contract. Yeah, it's it's uh, as I say, it's A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, R as in Ralph, watershed management contract. Oh, A N R. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. Yep. Which which the abbreviations stand for Agency of Natural Resources. Right, Leaving right, it of course. the short is is and then the very next line same same concern. Yep. Got it. All right. Anything else? Page three. Okay. Page four. Anything on page five? No. Bruce. Nice Wait a minute. Uh, draft? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I looked at. This is page five? Of, of the uh, April 20th. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Oh, where is it? There it is. Um, Okay, under RFP, about a third of the way down, Peter, it says ACO, then RFP underneath it. What page? On page, page five. five. And it says paving repairs due to FEMA storm 4621. That's that's not a date, that's a number designated for it? That's a storm number. Okay, never mind about that. And REF, should that be RFP? What does REF mean? And REF for paving an area on grass or brook road. Should be a request for a proposal. So it should be RFP, yes. not REF. RFP, request for a proposal. Okay. okay. Good, good eye. Over, yeah. I'm sorry, Peter? Yes? Good eye. But don't get excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, let me see. That now. is actually, uh, um, that's not my mistake, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, oh, all right, maybe I said the two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was okay. in the desert. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't yeah. question the agenda. What's that? I don't question the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Just above communications, Peter. Yeah. The sentence, be the second sentence before that. I know it's the second. This, excuse me. Let me try that again. The sentence word. just be, the sentence just before before communication says the meeting with Susie will be ten a.m. at the daycare building. I think you should say ten a.m. on four twenty-seven twenty-two. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, so I think I've... Got it? Okay. It's just before above communications. And no, I got that. Tell me what it okay. is. Okay. The meeting will be 10 a.m. Yeah, me at 10 a.m. on 4-27-22. Ah. At the daycare building. Got it. Okay, thank you. That's all I got. Anything on page six? Oh, the payroll warrant amount. I, I don't know what that number is. Mm -hmm. Anybody have the copy of payroll warrant number 63? This was confusing that night. Yes, it was. I'm not even sure that's the number. It's not the number. It's, it's the batch number. We'll have to get back to Peter. Okay, so we're going to have to um, approve it when we get down to it, but this has to be identified. You have the folder. I have this folder, but you see when the guy came out with a different payroll number, and he uh, said this was wrong, and that's I right. corrected it, and yeah. so I didn't have that number with me. Yeah. It wasn't with me long enough to copy it. <laughs> All right. Um, there is an item that we'll have to correct after the fact because I don't have the correct number here under pay order for payroll warrant. Um, there is no money amount here, so I will have to check on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will hold this until we have that amount. Yes. All right. I will see if I can get that tomorrow. Got Page it. Page six. On April 20th. Um, anything else on page six? Page seven. Page seven is the appendix which I uh, forwarded, which is what we discussed last week. Okay. All right. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes from April 20th, 2022. With the exception of payroll warrant amount to be determined tomorrow. Second. And seconded by Stan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from April 20th, and with the exception of the payroll warrant information, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you. Yes. Next, we have um, we're going to review the minutes of the special meeting from April 18th. Okay. Anybody have anything, any changes from page one? Mr. Noga? Yes, under number four, the uh, first line is next to number four. The second Paragraph down is a rather large one, and it's the the third paragraph where it says "dot continued by saying." Okay, this is not. Yeah, I have to edit this because he didn't take these notes. But go ahead. Right, right. Uh, it it goes on to say was called to discuss the ARPA money the town of Brookline received, as well as the fiduciary responsibilities. The and then the sentence ends, and another. Uh, oh, the select board has to consider. Oh, so that e T yes. should be a small T. Yeah, I have the, the. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll edit this. Okay. Anything else on page one, which I didn't number? I have to number these. I'm sorry. It's okay. You did a lot. 
Page two. Anybody have any comments or changes to page three? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'd like to make it a motion to approve the special mi meeting minutes from April 18th, 2022 with the one edit uh, mentioned in item four. May I have a second? Seconded by Bruce, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from April 18th, 2022, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Last but not least, the draft minutes from a limited edition meeting on Monday, April 25th. Again, I need to number my pages. Sorry about that. I'll fix that. Um, <clears throat> any changes to page one? Any changes to page two? Any changes to page three? Uh, I have a suggestion for number six under ARPA. Yes. Uh, uh, let's see. I know at some point I had referenced that from the ARPA perspective in terms of delineating the purpose and then the specific subsection of that general heading, it falled under a category called retention of uh, employees. So uh, I don't know if, I, I guess what I'm suggesting is that in that next, that middle paragraph, next to last paragraph where it says using ARPA money for this salary shortfall was deemed appropriate and and I either in print and I suggest maybe in parentheses put retention purpose period just as an aid. It sounds picky, but I, I you want to make identify the actual part of it. So what is that? It was deemed appropriate uh, for retention per, for the for a retention purpose. Okay, okay. makes sense. Any other changes? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes from April 25th with that, with those changes, which is numbering of the pages and uh, addition for, for retention purpose. Um, may I have a second? Second. He was louder. Stan seconded it. <laughs> all the, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from April 25th, 2020, 2000. 22 signified by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, old business. Open review voter table paving bid for the theme of repairs. Uh, Mr. Tanza checked the post office earlier today around 4.30. No additional bids came in. Uh, we do have, looks like two bids for each one. Um, the first bit that we're going to look for is the FEMA one. Any Mountain Road and Grassy Brook Road. Okay. And this is Grassy Brook Road first to FEMA. Disaster. All right. I'm going to let these, uh, let me pass these out to you guys, and you can each go for one and move them. Give this one to Sam. We received the bid from the Basin Brothers Trucking Inc. from Westminster, Vermont, and we also received a bid from All States Construction Inc. from Sunderland, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. All right. You give uh, me those again. I'm sorry. Could you give me those names again? Bazin yes. Brothers, uh, all state. Bazin Brothers, B A Z I N Brothers of Westminster, yep. Vermont, and the other company is All States Construction Inc. of Sunderland, Massachusetts. Okay. Okay. 
Bruce, you have the all states construction bid. Yes, I do. You want to read that out loud for us? We're pleased to submit the following proposal for Blackstop, Black Cup Repairs, Putney Mountain Road, and Gracebrook Road. The blacktop milling is 226 SY square yard, $27, 226 square yard estimated quantity. Unit price is $27 a square yard for a total of $6,102. How did I do that, Peter? Good. <laughs> Winners never see something. Okay. Next is hot mix asphalt with 48 tons quantity at $165 a ton for a grand total of $7,920. And then there's specifics about contractor responsible for traffic control, uh, project start date directed by the town. We guarantee that all materials supplied and work done shall comply with the state of Vermont agency of transportation standard specifications for highways and bridges, as well as those of the town of Brookline. Um, and uh, thank you. And in the packet is also enclosed, it's, I guess it explains them, there's subsid and then there's subsidiaries, a non-collusion statement, um, and hot mix in place references, which include well, town of Whitingham, Milford, New Hampshire, Chesterfield, New Hampshire, and some others. And then the paving equipment that's going to be used, I believe, is what it looks like. And milling previous work, similar to the list of towns that I gave you before, but with a little bit of a difference. Um, corporation certificate to action. Uh, I don't know what this is. And it's notarized. It's part of their vendor package. Okay, it's notarized. Certificate of liability insurance is enclosed. Additional remark schedule, additional insured owners and leases. This is all the packet. Okay, so we're looking at for the first bid here. Um, let me add it up 6102 and 7920-2270. for the damage on Putney Mountain Road and Grassy Brook Road from the storm that occurred, uh, disaster 4621 for the first bid. All right, and Stan, do you have a second bid? Oh, this bid is for the patch near the bridge on Grassy Brook Road. It's at the T where uh, Putney Mountain Road is to the right. And it's also for the upper Putney Mountain Road area. Uh, prepping and handiwork, removal of pavement and paving. Uh, and there are some terms in here that are completely alien to me on the second page, which does not have the, the numbers. And I would expect that Mark and or Archie would want to review this because I, it doesn't mean anything to me. And it may be a significant uh, issue when in fact it's done and over and said with, it may add to costs, I'm not sure. You know what needs to be done and unfortunately I don't. What I can tell you is that uh, for the simple patchwork at that intersection of Putney Mountain Road and Grassy Brook Road at the, the bridge, the work for cold planing of uh, eight by eight feet by 25 feet to an area of two inches, paved milled area with three and three, three eighth inch type four and a tack coat, cost for that is $2,650. To prep Putney Mountain Road and for other handwork patching, which involves uh, saw cutting and removing pavement as needed, prep existing gravel for four inches of paving, pave two courses, 2.5 inches of base and 1.5 of top, area to be paved four feet by 260 feet, that cost or bid amount is $11,000 even. For Putney Mountain Road, REM period pavement and pave with explicit comments of, and I know Peter, this is being unfair to you here, just leave out what you need to. Uh, saw cut and remove pavement as needed is one comment. Pave two courses, two and a half of base and 1.5 of top. Area to be paved 10 feet by 80 feet for that 
topic, it's $17,000 even. The grand total for both areas or all three major categories is $30,650. And again, page two has a lot of stuff like uh, says shoulder gravel and or loam at edges of new pavement by others. I have no idea whether the first bid includes that additional work or not. These people do not. Uh, compaction testing to be done by others. I don't know how that relates to the other bid. Uh, there's, a, there's a comment here about uh, an issue that I, I Baz and Brothers will, will not be held responsible for puddles or areas slow to drain due to design issue creating areas of less than 2% slope. And then it goes on to say pricing for this project is based upon no retainage. I have no idea what that is. If project is to have retainage, please contact us prior to awarding this contract to discuss. So there are things that I, I don't know how it affects this bid, what it means. I'd like to make a move, make a motion or suggest that we table the awarding of these bids, of this particular bid, until reviewed by the uh, Mark Bills and uh, Archie Clark and get their recommendation and interpretation of what the bid actually means based upon the original RFP. I think that's wonderful. Yep. And the only addition I would make to that is, is the, the number 12 in the second page. It says, this quote is valid for 15 days. Payment terms are 15 days. Wow. Pavement marking are by others. And it says they'll start July 15th and end by September 1st. So you got payment 15 days. We've had to start. Well, not that. We got accepted in 15 days. Right. Otherwise, it could be changed. So there's a two week limit in that regard. So okay, we well, need to yeah. bear that in mind when we look to others for guidance. All right. Good. Um, I'll put this back here. So I made a motion to table the awarding of this bid until we can review this in more detail with the road commissioner and road supervisor. Uh, may I have a second? You have it. Second by Bruce. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of tabling this initial bid for uh, disaster 4621 signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the bid is currently tabled at this time. Next bid is for the uh, RFP for the blacktop milling and resurfacing on Grassy Brook Road. Bruce, I'm going to give to you the All States construction, and I will pass the Basin Brothers <coughs> bid to Mr. Noga. <coughs> <clears throat> Give you a minute to look at it and then I'll ask you to summarize it. Okay, this is for the uh, milling and resurfacing of the section of Grassy Brook Road from approximately 1,675 feet. Bruce, what could you tell me about the um, all states construction? Blacktop milling, estimated quantity, 4,094 square yards at three and a quarter, $3.25 a square yard for a total 13,000 305.50, Peter. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hot mix asphalt, 458 tons at $115 a ton for a grand total of $52,670. That would make the total total $65,975.50. Hey again, please. Yep, the grand total would be $65,975.50. Thank you. Welcome. And this is a similar packet as with, with what they gave the first time. I don't see the sense of going through it all again. It's no. very similar. All right, yeah, we'll put that back in the envelope. All right, so Stan has Basin Brothers. 
Yeah, Dave's and Brothers Trucking, dated 5 3 of 2022. It's a quotation. There's two major categories <clears throat> uh, milling existing blacktop to a depth of 1.5 inches. It's uh, 4,100 square yards. Cost $13,940. Second category is for the machine paving, 465 tons. The total is for that category, $50,220. And a grand total of $64,160 even. The only documentation that was sent with this, aside from page two, which is exactly the same as the other quote that I just read regarding the other area of town, is their certificate of liability insurance, which they sent in. But the same comments that appeared on, on that other report are the same for this one. 15 days, low spots they take no responsibility for. Uh, retainage is an issue again, shoulder gravel issue, issue again, et cetera, et cetera. And there's another category to give Mark something to think about, Mr. Bills. It says one mobilization included in above price. It's a cost of $3,250 for each additional mobilization. And I, again, as a novice, have no idea what implications that has for the job. So it looks like another cabling venture here. That's what we have a road crew for. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we table this uh, this second bid until further review with our road supervisor and road commissioner to make sure that we have a complete understanding of the limitations of the contracts or the bids that have been presented for this particular job. May I have a second? You got it. Seconded by Bruce. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of tabling the second bid and for, final, for future review, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Okay, the bid will uh, be tabled at this time. Thank you. It's this one. Right, thank you very much. Um, next item on our agenda, purchase policy. Does the select board wish to change the purchase policy regarding accepting electronic bid submission as such, such as email or fax? Discussion and vote. Um, I am going to read the uh, statement. There is no statutory process for electronic bidding. Refer to your pol purchase policy if it is any advice. If nothing is in the purchase policy, as long as you are upfront with the applicant, you should be okay. It may be worth revising your purchase policy to have a better clarification on electronic bids. A VLTC is available for further help if, if we would like. And I just was thinking about what Bruce was saying about uh, fax issues and um, that sometimes they are not sufficient. And I believe that since we have extended the amount of time between putting a bid out and when it needs to come in, instead of having it due in two weeks, we now have it due the following month. It is, provides enough time for mailing. So I would not no longer be in favor of modifying the purchase policy, unless you all convince me differently tonight. Well, as far as the facts, I already made my point. What happened with, with my doctor, for, Pat, for Patty's neck issue, where I had to go back and forth four or five times and they couldn't figure out what was going on and they got stuck in the fax machine. We don't want that to happen. The person who makes a bid and it doesn't go through, we're gonna have a problem if he's, if he's not recognized. So I, I think the fax thing is out. Email, cut to the chase. I'm gonna keep going the way it is. That's what I'm at. I don't know what you're I'm for emailing and not using fax. Are you? Yeah, because if you know we, we found our, ourselves in a situation with the sand and salt shed where things okay. need to be done like that. And by not including it, we're then having to deal with justifying that one time, where if we include it in the ability of the purchase policy to include it, and in the specific RF, RFP, depending upon time constraints, we make that decision at that time, which aspect of our purchase policy do you want to use? Do you want to allow them to mail it and email it? Do you want to allow them to email it? Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but 
I have found that over the last half a year, since the first of the year, that my neighbors are getting my mail and I'm getting their mail. We are all post office oh, yeah. boxes in a line, but somehow the number on the front, 65, seems to be matching the number 47, the number 45, and the well, number 38. So stuff is going to the wrong place. And then reading the front, front port forum, when I, uh, back when I first started having problems, there were people who were not getting their mail for mm, days on that. end. So it, we lately, the last two, 14 days, it's been great, but I have no idea whether that's gonna change. And I thought, you know, it would be kind of nice to have a foolproof system where if we need a bid by a certain date and we allow for the uh, uh, email route to be utilized and specify the email address, it's only going to go into that email address, whether it be the select board, the town clerk, or the town, or whatever, it, we're assured we're going to get it. And if the person who sent it doesn't find the address because they're one digit off, it's just going to bounce back. That's They'll look right. it up and send That's it to the correct. right place. So I think from an expediency and an efficiency and heaven forbid emergencies as time to time happen that I would feel comfortable with having an email option right, so available. Right. And if we felt it appropriate, you can stay there. And now it's safe when you're doing the RFA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay, that way exactly. everybody's, every, every option is available. It's on the, on the table. Okay. Use it as you see fit. What do you think, Don? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I think the faxing is a problem. I yeah. agree. Um, I didn't think about the postal, but I do remember the postal delivery issues. They're looking for help too. They're having right. issues yeah. with personnel. Our stuff does go to our a did that job, so yeah. I know it pretty pretty well. Our, our our stuff does go to a post office box, but if you wanted yeah. to change the uh, 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 purchase. purchase policy to accept electronic bid submissions, such uh, such as email, is there should we? Um, uh, Get the. I don't have my purchase policy here. I read it to you a little bit. And it's nothing we can do right now, really. I well, mean, I suggest we make suggestions or in a work it. session or mail the suggestions to each other. Well, you've already got it. Modify it. You've already stated it. So, so we just need to read some. We need some of the. Re we need to rewrite the purchase. Re retype right. the. Or add to it or whatever you have yeah, to do. Yeah. I mean, or, just or like yourself did. I, three weeks ago, maybe four, asked the very same question of the LCT. I get a very similar answer from a different person uh -huh. and uh, they match. It's allowable. The law doesn't deal with it. You do what you want because the law doesn't address it. As long as you're consistent and orderly in the process, uh -huh. that's what matters. And you, we insert it in the, in, in the purchase policy. And when we do the, when we do the RFP, we'll state we're accepting snail mail, email, whatever. So the next question is if we all agree to that, who, is going to volunteer, <laughs> or how are we going to make the, the necessary language change so that we I, don't leave anything undone before we? Well, we'd we have to look at the at the um, at the purchase policy and just change it with that insert. You typing it up? Is that what you're saying? You're going to ask me to type? Well, that's what, that's what Stan's saying. Who's going to do the change? I'm going to be out. Of, out. I'm not. Well, we can. We don't have to do this right this minute, like Stan was saying. We can do no, it. no, no. For the next meeting, I suspect. If we have a next one this month or another one next month, I'd be happy to do it. If, if you know, I'm not too fast. I, 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 I'm not either. But you know, I figured out how to verbally ah. say stuff to Microsoft Word, and it it goes right. Oh, really? Do you want to put it in for June? For sure. June? Yeah. Let's yeah. Just put it back a little yeah bit. If you'd like, you don't mind. Okay, don't you have my email go to the town's computer? Or? That's a, that's another question we need to deal with. Uh, we could say it loosely, you know, either as directed by the by the board, select board, which could mean flexibility. Or we know already which one it's going to be. Then state you get yeah. We could put a we could put a a, a wording in there. So uh, as per the RFP, direct the emails to the as per the, each individual RFP. It probably would come to the select board chair. Yeah. Um, Just so that one person sees it all morning. Yeah, so that is not. Yes, it keeps the confidentiality going. My apology for cutting you off. No, no problem. All right, so we will um, agree that adding the option of using email for bids is, is the select board's choice in our discussion, and we will actually modify and have a new policy to sign um, sometime in June.
All right, very good, thank you. Um, let's see, next one, green up day. Great sign, I guess Timbo put that up at the corner of Hill Road and Grassy Brook Road with the bags. There are yeah. more bags here in town. That was actually Tommy Brooks. Oh, Tommy Brooks? They did that. Oh, Tommy, Tommy Brooks did that? Yeah. It's, it's the uh, snowmobile. I store. thought it was the snowmobile sign. I said that to Howard. I said, what's that, the snowmobile <laughs> sign? Yeah. Yeah. Tommy's the game game. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's been doing it since he was a kid. Oh, wow. Every year you can count on Tommy Brooks. And not to discredit him for stepping up to no, no. take charge, but uh, Tommy put that up, made the coverage, put over the snowmobiles. And, I reckon, okay. And then also, uh, he did talk with Tim, and they decided to put the bags there available so that if anybody wanted to go out ahead of time. I think it was empty. You talk about in the. Uh, it's been empty for two days. Yeah, so, in, the, in the square. So they put, I don't know how many no rows price. of bags in there. When the sign went up, they all disappeared. Tommy came and see me, and I stopped and got another four. four rolls of bags. Put those in. We put them through the handle so they could rip them off on the milk crate. Those all disappeared. Great. Oh, they're stealing them. I've only seen they're three, three they're bags. Uh, what okay, would you want to steal plastic bag? That's two dollars or hundred. Strange things happen. They're, so, they're stealing them. They're big. I, oh, they're big, oh, they're the big ones. Yes. I didn't want to uh, give all of our bags up, so I kept five rolls here oh, for Saturday yeah. in case people do still show up here. Uh, Tommy's got plans. He's got the normal crew that generally shows up for Saturday wow. morning. That's wonderful. Good, good. Making plans already. to. So how many rolls up. do you think are disappeared already? Six? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say out. probably more like Eight, 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 eight to ten rolls have disappeared. And I've only seen three bags beside the road. And it says, you know, pick up, leave them beside the road. Whatever. Yes, I saw that. And Tommy didn't want me to pick them up so that we could tell what people have green cleaned up. So I'm hoping that come the end of day, we don't get everybody shed in a green bag and their tires laying beside Grassy Brook Road. But We'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, I don't think people. Yeah, I. I, I, I mean, we should leave. I've monitored the road sites just driving into Brookline and out, and it's pretty clean from the Green Iron Bridge uh, up through here, with the exception of a couple items you can notify from. Okay. Um, so. Two weeks ago, my wife and I took a walk down to the bottom of Hill Road where the Recycle bin is, yep. and then we went up to Kirsch Road, and there was a lot of beer cans and soda cans yeah. in that in I, that area, and I that's what we're going to work on okay. that day. That All right, yeah, I'm sure walking, you're definitely going to find stuff you won't see from the vehicle, but because they um, throw really well, yeah, except the front of my now, Funny Mountain's going to be one of the biggest challenges. Uh, there's recliners, there's bureaus, there's really. Household rubbish. Wow. Bath somebody, bathroom remodel. Yeah, somebody remodeled mm. bathroom. There's sheetrock and That's sinks true. and toilets. And, uh, but uh, Johnny Swing oh, and Tom Swing uh, have a crew that is planning to go there first thing. Fantastic. Get those down off the hill. And then there's more stuff out on uh, Ellen Ware Road. Mm -hmm. and, and like you say, it seems like I think when COVID went by, a lot of stuff didn't get touched. And now the joy. But it's you drive Route 30 and it, it's every 10 feet is a can in the bottom. Yeah, I've noticed that. So mm -hmm. we, okay. all right. Well all right. So we'll thank you and I'll uh, send out a letter trying to get people to be more conscientious about stealing the green up bags. Well maybe they're ho holding them till Saturday. Maybe. And they're gonna I will I will say I'm hoping that. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Um item G, our reform. Is the our reforms were submitted on April 29, 2022, with much to the thankful help with I received from Melissa Brown uh, because of the Excel, she was able to take our, our, our budget and, and put it in a format that she could download and upload up to ARPA. And um, there, therefore, we should be getting the second half of the payments this summer if we hadn't gotten that in. It was a little 
little hairy, that's was stressful at first, making sure that we have everything. Yeah, so that, so it's all done. Good. Um, Thank you. Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, item H, open select board seats. It's the responsibility of the current select board to try to fill the vacant select board. Um, and I'm guessing we need to really think about how to do so that and we can roll that together with the administrative assistance discussion about, uh, well, we'll do one at a time. Um, You know, I had started doing that one letter and it was very long. And then we discussed at another meeting that maybe the ending should be changed a little bit. Um, I don't don't know, I don't know what to do. I mean, there's a lot of vacancies. I don't know how to really put it out there because yeah. I have too much. To, I had a lot of emotional guess when I wrote that. So I, I don't um, think there's any way a nice way around me saying this, but I think we should be picky. Uh, and, and, and we're not in a position to be picky <laughs> because we're working together. We're working together rather well. We've only been working together a month as the three. Um, and if we have somebody that's interested, hey. I'm happy to listen to what somebody has to say. I want to see what they offer to help us or to help the town. And if they're willing to leave the, leave the I've always looked at you, leave your personal agenda at the door you're here to work for the town. I'm happy to talk to you, anybody that, that, that's a townsperson would be interested in, uh, in helping us out. I don't want to uh, say that the wrong way, but when I first started saying be picky, I meant that in a positive way. And if I can branch off to the administrative assistant, Quite frankly, I think that's more important than two right now, just to alleviate the current strain. But by law, we have to do the select board, not the administrative assistant. By law, we have we to, have to fill the select board vacancies as soon as possible. But how are we going to select it? That's what I'm saying. That's what we're again. discussing. How are we going to how are we going to reach to the community? Okay, so make an attempt is what you mean. Well, we've already, you've already done that. I you? have not, Mel. I have okay. not put it out. Okay, so you want to? It was done, I believe it. The open seats were done at town meeting, weren't they? Or the I think before the town meeting, didn't we send out a through? Oh, Julie? yeah, yes. before we've been okay. looking for, for okay. so, so it's what? been done, not, yes. not since after the correct, election. not since uh, since that point, but, but yeah, if you I, if you want to redo it on on Julie's website and the front porch forum, the thing uh, is, I have. I have so much to do in three days. I no, you're not doing nothing I, in three days. I'm willing to good. assist in any way possible. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm beginning to get worried and troubled. Uh, I've mentioned this more than once. If there's a number of things piling up, do not hesitate to say, look, these are what I got. This is what I feel comfortable with. Would you mind doing this? Mm. Yeah. Chances are I'm going to be willing to help you. I mean, if we, so I, I don't, it, 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 one of my past faults, if I had a other one, is I did not like to delegate because I like uh-huh. to have a handle on it myself. Uh-huh. And that is a flaw because there are, it, it, it's almost saying this other person isn't going to do it right or they can't do it. And that was an inappropriate assumption on my part. It's just that I like to be a hands on kind of know what's I going out. Exactly what you what you so yeah, I'm so guessing I. that you're just like that. And it's going to be a hard thing to get rid of. But I, I, you know, again, I don't know what more I can say. I, it hurts me to know that you're spending all the time you've got. You're walking around with aches and pains because of me, <laughs> and, and and you're going to have an operation. Yeah. And and there, there needs here. to the, the wall has been hit. We need to look at what we can do to divvy things up. Right. If you you already have a copy of my initial one that I sent out the draft. Yeah. If you wanted to modify that, if I could resend it in a Word document for modification purposes, I would be willing to do that. And then we can modify, we can change the ending to make it less whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'd be willing to help. I mean, all right. know, we're all in this together. And if I can follow up on Bruce's comments, uh, I, I think one of the th- things that, uh, and you appropriately mentioned it, is that it does take some work. Uh, I was looking at some comments made by another town officer in another town recently that surfaced in the paper, and they were looking for additional staff, and the same concept came up. It, to, to, to say I will 
and sit and offer to do nothing, refuse to do nothing, is tantamount to having only three board members in the first place. So I I suggest that you know when it's it's when when this modification is made that we uh, modification meaning that meaning that the change of the the, the letter or oh, okay. ad or whatever the best term yeah, that yeah. is that that we let individuals know it does take time. Uh, I'm finding myself spending inordinate amounts of time, yeah. and when you're writing something or saying something, you don't want to hurt anyone's right. feelings. You don't want to imply anything. And, right. and sometimes, and, and not thinking it all the way through, but hastily putting it down, you do say or think something that shouldn't be said or, or it related. So uh, it, that is, I guess, part of the, the act or routine or responsibility that each select board mm -hmm. member and any town official has. So um, I would you know, like to make it clear that you know, there, there is an option and that we start hiring people with salaries to take over some of the responsibilities given the toll that it is continually taking, not just on our board in this town, but other towns as well. Mm -hmm. You know, where you only have, like, I, you know, I keep re feeling sorry for the people up in Athens in the same boat we are. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been going through this since last summer. Year since, after the, year. since the hurricane and on, on infinite on infinitum. Mm. And now we've lost Dave, and now we lost Gwen, and we're down to three people. Yeah. You know, and it's part of democracy. The unfortunate part of democracy is that the citizens have to be involved. And it's not a free ride. No. You know, you, you, it isn't a free ride. It isn't. It, it is isn't. absolutely not. And you're touching on, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you're touching on a subject that I really got real strong about. And that, and that has nothing to do with anybody that's been on this board. But caring has been a, it's been an excuse the last two years not to care. Think about that for a second. It's an excuse in the last two years, given that everything's going on, not to care. In other words, what I'm pertaining to is people have committed themselves to doing things, but in the last two years, they've had a reason. Okay, I can get out of it now. And I've seen that time and time. I don't know if you both agree with me, but that's what I see. And, um, you know, who am I to throw stones at people? And I'm not, that's not my intent, but we've got, we're in a different environment than we were two years ago. I, I correlate looking for select board members or volunteers, citizen volunteers. It's difficult enough to hire someone for a paying job. There are so many jobs that are not being filled that this is, makes it even more difficult for us. So mm -hmm. if, if we can handle the select board seats and administrative assistance initial mm -hmm. thing by putting out that letter, okay. as I said, I'll send you the Word document. You mm -hmm. can modify, change it, rewrite it, use it or not use it if you'd like, and uh, put it out and see what we get. Because well, these I was, are all I was speaking the negative and I'll flip to the positive. And you got a person like Melissa Brown. And the story. I mean, she's great. I mean, as far as what she's committed to helping us with in her attitude, and, and and we've worked with her on her needs, and boy, I love the way that relationship is starting. And you know, after going through the, watch my words, uncertainty in the last three or four years of treasurer's position, the 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 uh, the, um, the mode of stability uh, that that's starting to happen makes me warm and fuzzy. I'll leave it at that. However, Bruce, we just got notified today I know. that the I know. treasurer has to be a resident of Brookline. I know. Even if she's an appointed treasurer, it's not the same as appointing an out-of-town lister. So yes. we will have to add the treasurer back in here and we have to find a, she can be an assistant treasurer. Maybe, I don't even we, know. We have, that we, has to be we, researched and we can talk about not. that in executive yes, or later on. Uh, is there a closet space here at the office? What's that? You enter a closet space here if you have <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the hard part about that is and everyone who's tried it, I, I think Treasure. the treasurer's position, I, even as a select board member, I made a passing comment to another resident that I happened to be in a phone discussion that, you know, I've got to, I've got to end this conversation as much as I'd like to go on because I got to finish something before I go to bed. And the comment was, there's not that much to do as a select board member. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I was sitting there thinking, they don't have any idea. They don't. And, oh, and I've I said think that all, before. The, all the people that have volunteered to be treasurer, I think, 
have had this an image that it can't be that difficult. It's kind of but when you find yeah. out your there's taxes, there's payroll, oh, there's yeah. accounts payable, mm -hmm. there's different accounts money comes out of, and where is it so going? And then there's going to be a correlation. Right. It's a big job, and and mm -hmm. so it's just it, it's a matter. I think I'd rather tell somebody up front it's it's not easy. Right. To see that they still want to give it a whirl to be helpful to the community they live right. in. Right. Rather than go. Rather than have it be on and a month quick yeah. is, is a way I'd like to pursue that. And mm -hmm. again, I'll just, You're whatever right. I come up with, I'll send to both of you. Obviously. I agree 100%. Thank you. And, and I just last point um, that reminds me, I've said this before back in 2014 when we first came on the board. I had no clue. I'll just say, oh, sure, I can contribute to that. I don't mind. I'm retired now a couple of years. Okay, this is great. I had no idea. No idea what it entailed. It was, the first, our little it was the first meeting, the second meeting, I had to break up a fight. <laughs> yes. Fight in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's move along then. <laughs> so much um, for that. You don't have to put that in, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the open select board seat and the administrative assistance discussion will be is that we will try to reach out to the community and share with them our, our needs and, and concerns and, yes. and work from there. I've been I've been kind of making little notes on the pad on my desk just of things, and I hope you guys are too, on things that someone else could be doing that would help me and the board in general, so that if we are looking for someone, we can accurately quote, it's going to be 10 hours, it's going to be 15 or 20. I've been keeping a journal. Okay. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's easier for you too. Me, yeah. I'm in a little bit different situation. You make a lot of phone calls. I do make a lot of phone calls, right. but I have to. I mean, I'm not being a control freak about it, but it's just, you'll see when I explain you in a few right. minutes. Why? Yeah, yeah. So All right, well, the last thing I wanted to do is hire somebody for 20 hours and find out that you're only going to take 10. That's right. the reason for the planning part. I think you're right. Okay. All right, so I'll move on then to new business. When I was here last week with sitting with Judy, she pointed out it's not the first time that the two chairs at the Lister's desks are really in poor shape, and one of them makes you sit sort of funny because there's a rod in the middle. Uh -huh. And we, we rolled in a couple of these big chairs, and she said, thank you, but no, those are board chairs. They're not ergonomically good for sitting okay. and doing desk work. So okay. she wanted to know who does purchasing for things like office chairs. And so I said, I'm not sure if this is something we can ask the town clerk to do, or if this is something the select board orders or, or what, but this is, wow. that makes sense. The chairs, you can go take a look at there. And I think the separate, the treasurer, I mean, the uh, town clerk and assistant town clerk, their, their chairs are also pretty squishy, but they haven't got another second request. But they don't the the same way. Okay. Well, are looking for suggestions or oh, yeah. okay. okay? I would I would suggest we a uh, leave on uh, con contact the town clerk and assistant town clerk and the listers and the uh, treasury people and ask do they want a new chair? It seems in our opinion they should have one. Yeah, and then uh, Staples has uh -huh. sales 15, 20 different styles. Well. There. And, I agree with that. And everything. we have an account with them because that's where we get some okay. of our stuff from. I don't know if the credit card has been used in the past, but ask them to go down and decide yes. what they would prefer for each one of them. Yes. And uh, and then yeah, and uh, and then uh, I, I think this is something that the select board really should govern and okay. let them get back to us and let let's and know what, what the model is, what what the brand is, uh, what the cost is. And and see if okay. we can cut a deal for four or three or okay, whatever okay. to get a better deal if possible, ordering by volume. And the, well, how many do we need? And I wouldn't mind going down and pick them up if anyone else is. Well, I have a truck too, so there you go. You don't have a truck, do you? No. Well, I do. I got two arms. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I was going to say something, but I think you hit me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, the, the, the two large contract too, yeah. and I got caught. I'm oh, sorry, I got right now. Go ahead. There's, there's the two that. chairs at the Lister's seat need to be replaced. They've been asked for it twice since I've been here. Okay. The uh, treasurer, the uh, town clerk, and assistant town clerk haven't asked. What do you? What would you like me to do? Again, 
Uh, there's a lot. I don't know. Do you want me to write a letter? Do you want me to call somebody? Well, you got a lot on your plate. I'm doing a lot of writing. I'll, if you I'll, want I'll call. People? I'll call tomorrow. To, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday. I'll call Guy in the morning and say we we think it's a great idea uh, that uh, if it's needed, you go go down, and take a look, have them go down, and take a look, and see what they like, and to make. I'm only that you online. online. Right? Can't let they have That's right. Them. But so they, they have to see them. But they want to sit in them, which that's, is recommended. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. And I would estimate the price range would be $100, $200 per chair. So okay. we're looking at $800 and $400. It depends on what, what the guy here, he went to the thing These are like $250. Oh, okay. uh -huh. but these are, these but are, these are conference above chairs. Yeah. These are conference chairs. These are yeah. not uh, running chairs. So I'll, I'll, All right, so Bruce, you'll follow I'll, up on I'll that? I'll pull a guy and see what All it right. works out. Thank you. All right, road supervisor, we'll move on to Mark's uh, road supervisor report. One of the things we talked about before was looking at a timesheet. Um, I typed up a simple one, but this one looks pretty nice. This is one that guys says possible for more fills. Um, I'm going to let you look at this. I don't know. You can make tons of copies of it, but it's uh, something where you might be able to put down and then hand it in every week or two weeks or once you get a page filled. But yeah. no more than two weeks. Yeah, that looks pretty simple. <laughs> so if I made a few copies, would you at least try this to see how workable it is? Sure. All right, Mark, I'll make copies before you leave tonight. I'll give you copies and we'll leave this here as a uh, template okay. and see how it works for you. Okay. All right, sure. All right. excellent. All right, um, culvert leaf blower. Uh, it's been signed. I asked Judy to fax over or email over the signed quote uh, with a request to call you when it came in. There's been some lag, either not receiving that information or, or what. So I wrote again to Judy, um, but it should be in the in the should be ready. Okay. I think we. I'm going to even see if we have a check for them today in here, so right. we might be real ready. So I know. So between our next meeting, if everything gets finalized at HP Fairfields, the salesman is satisfied with. There is a check in here to pay for the blower tonight. Oh. So okay. it's been. We we're ready to go. We're going to right. sign it if we approve it, and we can mail it everything at once. All right, and but, if. if that's all good with everybody, and there's a chance that I can go and pick it up. Yep, with a check. Happy. Okay. Yep, Sorry. I can leave it, sign it tonight, leave it at the office. You can call Guy up and say, can I come pick up the check? I'm going to go up and pick up the equipment. Okay. All right? Sounds good. All right, good. Um, also, I talked to uh, Jay Wilson and about the welding of that specialty. He says, if, if you know how to weld, yep. uh, you can order the steel. Have it delivered to their garage, and you can use their equipment to modify uh, a base as needed. Just contact Jay Wilson, and sure, he'll be happy to oblige your great. That'd be your great. Rent. Yeah, I, I mean that, that that'll be very helpful. Uh, I was thinking that the way it's set up, I could probably just tow it. You know, the first time or two. Sure, you know how to weld. Okay. I've got some welding. Oh, baby. Oh, I, 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 yeah. Um, we'll get it and use it, and then we'll figure out As what's the, what you can do. Yeah. 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 Put it on your new machine. Sure. Yeah. All right. And then I'm just going on here, and then I'll let you talk. Okay. <laughs> Summer calendar for project work. I think Stan had pointed out at some point that the, uh, the uh, what agency is requesting us to have an actual plan? Uh, uh, Forward looking summer plan. What are we going to do this summer? What I what believe, actual culverts, what actual things? I so I think that was the MRGP. Okay, that's what it was. Is that uh, 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 yeah. there, there's two different times this year when we need to uh, advise what projects need to be. Uh, uh, indicated and by the 25th of June we need to make application for VTRANS for grants in aid and just today I think I got an email that Mark was kind enough to forward along from Jeff Nugent where he's indicating that by the middle of this month he 
is going to have met with the road supervisors, of which we, our town would be one. But it's, it, he, he was, it was a little unclear. I wasn't sure whether the application needed to be submitted or whether the work needed to be done by the 25th of June. Because the phraseology was, I'm thinking, what do we have that we are going to have done by the 25th of June? And there, there isn't anything. No. So I'm not sure. It sounded like he had, he was a little bit stressed out when he wrote the letter based on one of his sentences uh, that he made a joke that was, I think, serious. He's He's got a lot of work on his plate. Uh, and then there's, by the 30th of September, we need to have a grant application completed for stormwater and uh, highway mitigation uh, types of work, which is, I think, an MRGP kind of thing. Uh, stormwater runoff is their, their thing. Uh, uh, so those are the two application deadlines. And uh, I will clarify it with um, Jeff, tomorrow by email is just what it is he's looking for so that we don't miss that. Very good. All right, Mark, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dad, tell us what Yeah, I just wanted to, to, add, to stand there. So when Jeff meets with us, uh, he knows that we need to complete the 15% uh, road segments that need to comply with the uh, Clean water at. Mm -hmm. So hopefully Jeff can clarify with us uh, which of those segments uh, could get done and how much the grants probably not going to cover all of them. It might only be a couple of them, and then we'll be responsible for others. But it asks if we're upgrading culverts, which we will be, and whether we do them on the town's time which we plan to change them out anyway, but some of those may fall under the, the grant title. So hopefully we can clarify that up soon and get the, the grant. I was glad, I was glad that Mark had asked us a little while ago about culverts because one of the things that Jeff Nugent mentioned in the email today was hopefully you've ordered your culverts that you need ahead of time based on what we've experience last year and I was sitting there thinking right on mark. <laughs> yeah. On it. Yeah. That, uh, the wait last summer was a lengthy one. So hopefully we're on schedule for that. Okay, so uh and just monitoring the roads on daily checks, uh the heavy winds, some rains, and always debris in the road to be removed. Um I've taken down the Putney Mountain Road closed signage that we had up for the winter months and uh, put that back in the shed. Uh, I've made contact with HP Fairfield salesmen a couple of times. Seems like we're now on the same page all the way around. Um, also was forwarded the tree warden uh, school email um, that was sent to the town office and I signed up for that and Monday night was the first online Zoom meeting. So I was uh, joined in on that and we had some really good talks and topics uh, with eight other or seven other uh, road I think there was a couple road foremen, most of them were just uh, tree wardens. And so this class is a online class with three Zoom meetings, uh, but it's, um, you can ask questions and they just give talks about the uh, emerald ash border attacking all of our ash trees and what towns are doing about it. So gaining a lot of good valuable information about um, that there's invasive species, you know, anything that comes in our right of way, uh, we're talking about. So I'll be able to update 
down with some valuable information when I get done with that. Um, got the email from Jeff Nugent that he's going to meet with us soon about the grants. Um, I called down, they got forwarded me the phone number to Triple T, and I called and introduced myself, told them that I would be taking over the exchange um, with the recycle bins, and um, it was pretty simple there. And we, uh, a Friday morning, I monitored the inside of the recycle bin, see that it was still quite roomy. So come Monday morning, uh, it appeared to be full. So I called and had it exchanged and did a little clean up around the outside. There's always somebody leaving something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, talked to Tom Brooks about Green Up Day coming Saturday. We made plans to uh, do our usual clean up, clean up. Um, and I, as I'm going around doing all of this different stuff there, I, I, I've got an ongoing list of accomplishments that will take place, some of it with the rented equipment. Uh, when that comes to town, it will be after our fiscal year. It will be in early July. And I still have a long and ongoing list of to-dos to accomplish throughout the year that I keep in mind and try to fill up as the, the weather and time allows. So that's, uh, that's one. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate everything. Moving on. Uh, highways and grants, Mr. Noga. Uh, yes. Um, there is uh, another one of these forms that was signed at the last meeting, which is a slight different form than the one that was signed. This one is called an MRGP amendment form. Mm -hmm. It requires the $240 fee. Mm -hmm. And I have filled everything in uh, and it requires your signature. After which we will, uh, uh, I'll go through the process before I end tonight. I was gonna send these in to the various people at would be trans and uh, I went back and looked at some of the emails that were sent to me by the various department heads. They prefer to have these done on the internet. So what I'm going to do is after you sign this one, I'm going to couple it with the one you signed last time mm -hmm. and uh, scan them in and send both of them to, to uh, the treasurer. I went online to help Melissa to see what was going to be done because I, I feel as a slick learner, but I didn't want to dump on the Treasury's department. So I was going to put this information on myself. But it turns out there's a state portal that is utilized. And I'm suspecting that the treasurer has the pin or code to access it. And it made reference to the fact when I read one of the emails that uh, you can sign on, fill out the form, quote unquote, and pay all in one motion. So she's probably going to do one series for one form, one for the other. I will provide her with everything that she needs. I did indicate that I tried to do it, but I found I couldn't, and I hated to bother at work again. So I thought I'd wait till after tonight till I have both forms. I still have the other one. I'll get this one I'll, this evening or first thing in the morning send them to her and indicate that it looks like, I'm sorry to say, you've got to do it, I can't help it on this matter. So that she will do that and pay them at the same time. Uh, the one question is, this $240 one was supposed to have been done December, by December 31st of 2020, it was not. The one on the other form that you signed last time is not due till the 30th of June. So the question I guess I have is, do we want to pay this one now and the other one in June, or do you want to pay both of them now? Yeah, does the board have uh, any feelings? Does May not make any difference? difference given the total is $740. No. Okay. So I will let her know that we've decided to let her allow them or authorize payment now for both of them. Uh, and we'll, we'll take care of that then. 
uh, that way. So here is the form for your signature. Anyone who wants a copy? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm got, I have a folder started on the roads and bridges standards that we got, did last time. I did not I have a folder started, but I'm going to wait till this is signed before I, I leave it here tomorrow. I guess when I come in on Friday uh, before it's available in the file cabinet. Thank you, Doc. All right. Now we're going to be golden, I suspect. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I was here and filed the uh, equipment loan file okay. in the file cabinet with Judy the other day, last Friday. So, no, it was Monday this week. I'm sorry. Uh, a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. So that is now up to date. We took the two that had been closed and put them in the closed section of that drawer. So right now, there's just the two. So right. Sanchez. And then the uh, and the equipment one, and that one will be over with shortly as well. So it'll just be the equipment one. I have not contacted the uh, vendor who gave us the on-site inspection quote from Burlington regarding inspecting the construction of the um, sand and salt shed. And the reason was I didn't get until Friday afternoon from WRC when the regional commission. A quote that was given in the hourly wage. Okay. What I need to do is look at when does overtime kick in? Because it's right now nine hours a day for six weeks, which is 45 hours. Is it 40 hours that overtime kicks in? It used to be. Okay, that's what my thought is. So at $90 an hour for the guy that's going to be there for six, for the uh, ninth hour every day over that time frame, we're looking at $135 and not $90. So the number they quoted is wrong. It's underquoted. And I don't have any supervision payroll for the job after the start introductory period. We'll be supposedly overlooking his shoulder during the work. No one is looking over his shoulder to finalize the paperwork. And I can't believe that for a firm that's that. So, so I want to, in I'm the sure. conversation, find yeah. out what do you is this quote right? Am I looking at interpreting something wrong here? And could you finalize it? And then the big question is going to be after we come to a number, is just finding out, okay, now these numbers are valid for how long? Uh -huh. could, because at the end of the year, if we find that given interest rate increases, et cetera, the costs are coming down. We're going to look at doing this project in next physical, not fiscal year, but calendar year. Will they hold the numbers for that time frame until then? Or do they want to just simply rebid later on if they want to rebid at all? Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to look at this in as thorough and complete process as I can. So that will be happening uh, then. Um, I did I did send to Mark and Archie a, 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 a form that I got off the internet that I have here somewhere that shows the summary of the projects through the VTrans people and uh, Megan when she was here. She told us how many of these road segments we're supposed to have done. And it shows the number on that form. I sent it to, to you and Mark, I mean, you and uh, Archie to get feedback on, do you know which ones we're talking about here? And it looks like what we have to do is wait until mm -hmm. Jeff Nugent comes to, to solidify the, that, that process. And then we'll know what grants we need to pursue. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so I guess in terms of what we owe and these two, two uh, documents that need to be sent in. We're going to be golden after they're received by the state as, in terms of getting the best, least amount of match possible. And we're going to be up to date and current. Uh, I didn't know since I had created this, if anyone had any questions about the amount of the, of the uh, retention of money amount and how it's calculated, uh, because we had voted 28. I would, oh, I have to, yeah. And I don't know if we need to modify it because we didn't say up to 28, we said 28. I would leave it as is. All right. And I would like to see this be a place in the ARPA file for the treasurer to reference if anyone has a question about the way the money was calculated. I thought this was ideal. Thank you yeah, so much. You are very, very, very yeah. appreciative of this. Great a nice, nice big package. It's okay. Nice, nice, nice. And, and this doesn't explain why one of the documents I hope to have for tonight, which I didn't get to because of some of the emails that we received recently yeah. and some other things I've been working on above and beyond this, uh -huh. this is that um, I wanted to put a brief overview uh, letter, cover, cover document 
in addition to this indicating that we became aware at which March, which August meeting last year that Mark was, was contemplating mm -hmm. doing something other, mm -hmm. uh, what date, uh, what meeting we voted uh, to to make counter offers, et cetera, and how it all came out. September. So it, it was, well, yeah, we it did it just July, before. July and August. It was. August was the was one that we voted to make the changes effective okay. September 1st. So I've got that date down and I've got a copy of, okay. the, of those things. But I, yes. I want to ask specifically no, no, cite them and rationalize why we did what we did, not Absolutely. in great detail. No, but just attached But just so that if, if we ever get audited, it makes sense. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. So so that's uh, okay. that's what I've done on that. Um, and I'm not sure there's anything else for me to go over now. I think that's it. Oh, the calendar of events I will have done for the next meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the other thing that I want to let you and the and other people who might be listening know is that. Uh, back when I first took over the uh, grant stuff, there were two spreadsheet type formats documenting the grants that we've had, the status of them, who provided them, the begin date, end date, the dollar amount of the grant, the match amount, the total, et cetera, et cetera. I will be updating both of those spreadsheets for the next meeting so that everything in terms of grants that will be completely up to date and current. Fabulous. Um, so that's I like up to date and current. That's good. good yeah, words. yeah. And it's like that. So, so I guess with that, that's all I have to say, and I appreciate your patience and listening. It's okay. You'll be having uh, patience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next is town clerk report. I have no report. I did put down uh, any other arbor related requests from the clerk. He has requested that we consider the cost system for land records use, and we will get some information from Mark Kirk later on. He also provided me the information who's current on dog licenses so that I can uh, keep that in my records. All right, uh, next going to town treasurer report. Um, there, uh, everybody should have gotten the April monthly budget and balance sheet mailed out, emailed out to you from Melissa Brown. Anybody have any questions, you can contact Melissa oh, about that. That was good. That was great. I'm going to move into this. <laughs> Not arguing about that. Select board chair report. Uh, I have a, I'm probably, it's as possible absence for the May 18th meeting. I probably will not be able to sit for or even stand for a long meeting since we do have long. However, if the agenda is modified in such a way so that all the voting spots come early or we have a special meeting where it's just voting on things that we have to vote on. So you have three people, um, you know, I'm flexible in that respect. So you and I can work that out when I get back from the Cape. When do I get back? I get back on the 13th. So, I'm only going to the 13th. So when we're talking the 18th, by that time, you have, you have your operation on Monday, right? Yeah. So I'm but, not going to be much of a person to have company for the bit. Like I know. That. Okay. I know that. Right. So you and I can work out what you want. Me to do. Okay. All right. Um, you can either do it by email or talk to me, but I'll be home on the 14th. Okay. Well, actually, the 13th. Is right. We'll, we'll touch bases. So do we, unless there's something important? Do we need to have a meeting on the 18th or should we just rest, let it rest and say if something kind of emergency nature comes up? Mm -hmm. We need the 15 days to answer those bids, but that seems to be the only press. I'm going to call them up tomorrow okay. and tell them that we've tabled it for further review. And does that mean that you're going to withdraw your bid if we don't get back to you in 15 days? I'll say, you know, I'll kind of let you all know what I find out. That's up to you, Brock. Mm -hmm. oh. You usually. I mean, what we could do is, you know, either hold it, and I think there's, do that. A, there's a term used of non-voting, but just informational sharing, essentially, in an open forum. Or, or we can just go June 1st. That's up to you guys. What do you think? Why don't we look at the agenda, what you have for perspective agenda, and then we can wing it. We can play it by yeah. year. Could be a special meeting last week of the month if we needed to. Yeah, sure. That would, that would be Yeah, you know, by that time, it would be feeling worse. better. All right. We'll see. So, all right. So that's it. One of the things I added during the uh, amending the minutes was I got a phone call from the people down at Liberty Tax. They asked, they said they were contacting town clerks and Guy Tanza gave me your phone number because uh, you're the select board chair. Uh, does the town of Brookline intend to um, uh, enforce the 8% penalty for the homestead rebate? Uh, 
if people for, did not file their homestead rebate, there's a penalty of 8% of the tax. Uh, and I said, well, I don't know. And it turns out that annually we're supposed to decide this and it's never been brought to the select board to decide it. I do remember at one point a resident uh, asked for leniency in this respect. And Mr. Tanzan told me that if you do it for one, you have to do it for the whole town, and he usually does it for the whole town. So it should be something that the select board decides. But I remember um, that. That was like three, four years ago. Correct. So what do we do? What should Don't I tell them? Don't change what we're doing. Okay, well. Right? I, it's not on the agenda to vote. I meant, I meant to put it on the agenda. What do I tell the tax people for their clients? The select board is in, will, yeah. will, is considering suspending the eight percent penalty at a future meeting because we're not going to we can't okay we can't, can't, we can't vote on it because it's we're not going to change our attitude right we're going to do what the town clerk has done in the past right but the tax should have come to the select board in the it past should have, it should, should always come to the select board, board to first. just determine the tax I would bet penalty very few people who are involved in that kind of scenario. Pardon me? I would assume there are only a very limited number of people in that. Right, category. correct. Probably a limited number of people. But yeah, it's usually a. So, however, you want to say it's fine. Yeah, me too. Okay. As long as, you know, uh, we're it, I, I'm going to state right now would be my intent to support the behavior of the town in the past, in but doing it officially this time. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's the only thing I have here. I would assume you're feeling the same way. Yeah. I do. All right. so the consensus task practice has been to elim to eliminate that burden mm -hmm. on the taxpayers. All great. right, so we'll move on here. No, okay, again, considering that they may not have a quorum for voting discussion, but they can determine that another time. Next, we'll talk about the building commissioner report, Bruce. All right, um, I got some stuff, but I think I can go through it pretty quickly. A couple of things that I found out. The first thing that I think I might have mentioned just before that, I think it was March, there was a legislature. There was a Vermont legislation weekly report that comes out every week that said that the state of Vermont was going to get $2 billion in infrastructure money, and 3.2 million of it was earmarked towards energy replacements, weather stripping, weatherization, and boiler replacement for municipalities, schools, etc. I haven't forgotten about that. Well, I read you that report at one point mm -hmm. several months ago. Um, I, so I went back about 10 days ago, we cut to the chase and wanted to find out what's going on because I carry everything about ARPA, nothing about infrastructure. Either. And I know that that was really good for us. So what I did was, uh, as I looked into it, uh, about ARPA money for Vermont, and I saw a VLCT meeting back in December, and I cut it to the chase where they were specifically talking about the ARPA money and said, you need to go to the Public Service Board of the State of Vermont, which I did. I called this woman that works out of home with the babies, and she said, Efficiency Vermont's hand. I said, okay. So I called Chris Greenwood, whom I've talked to about four times now. We're having quite quite the relationship at this point for all the things I've been dealing with. And he said it hasn't been doled out yet. You have to wait and see. They haven't really gotten any any um, information as to whether but when that $3.2 million that's you that's you mark towards what I said um, hasn't been uh, earmarked by the legislature to, for them to get it yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing soon because I believe this month is when the legislature legislative session ends. Um, that remains to be seen. So where I'm going with this is, um, is so as far as spending money on the school, uh, there will have to be shook out. We have ARPA money, we have possible infrastructure money, we have grants, we have rebates that are available to us, and I'm taking my time. I'm finding out where things lay before I go, before I tell you we should spend money on a boiler, heat pumps, whatever. Okay. Now, a little bit about the ARPA. We, we talked about that list that we had uh, at that special meeting that Dot made out that I contributed to which is a great list. And I'm gonna use that list to, to make a prioritization schedule and try to put what I perceive as numbers against it so that you guys can consider um, what, we could, uh, what we could use the money for. 
but I ain't rushing it. And I'm being methodical and accurate with our leverage. And I, I love using that term, our leverage, because a lot of this money, we can use this little amount to get a lot of this amount. Example, the wheeled excavator as an example. Um, but anyway, that's where I'm going with the with expenses on ARPA and expenses on Susie partially. Now, last Wednesday, the 27th, I did have a meeting with Susie and Olivia. Uh, I think I told you all about it, about consideration. Oh, what I did was I briefed them on what I wanted to do with the building and kind of what we were talking about. I was talking about here just a minute ago a little bit uh, about things I'd like to do to help to help that building improve. And I think I said that last meeting, so I don't have to get into that again. But uh, it was really interesting to see if they would consent to moving forward with the details on signing a loan for solar panels. And I got a message Monday morning, they're into it. I didn't think they would be, it was really 50-50, but they're, they're definitely into it. Now, what I'm doing at this point is treading water. And I told them that. You're hurting. Make I'm, sure they. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Yeah, make sure you speak up. Okay, Trey Warner, you're hurting. I'm going away for a week. This is what I'm doing. I want two to three estimates on anything I do related to heat pumps, uh, panels, or boilers. Consideration. I'm feeling uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable at the beginning with the way it all started out with the information I received. So I'm tightening it up. I'm going to tighten it up real good. I, I'm assuming by when I get to the end of it, I'll know exactly how much panel output is going to be put out relatively, what it's going to cost. Same with the with the air to air heat pumps. Um, I'm not comfortable with anything that I've seen so far. So I'm going to get comfortable first before I say, select board, we should spend money on $80,000 on heat pumps. Of course, I'm being facetious. <laughs> Um, after all that's done, at that point in time, and I also told uh, Olivia and Susie that we are treading water. That's the term I use while I get some of this work done, and it's going to take a little time. And I said that because I was kind of, they wanted me to know, they wanted me to answer when they wanted a response. Like I said, well, kind of soon, because I was talking about the interest rates, and we're not going to be able to, to worry about that because they go, they're going up today. I think half the time. That's so water good. under the bridge. Water under the bridge. Okay. So now, as far as if we go further with this, after gotten all these details together, we decide, okay, this is a good idea. We can work, we, we can try to work this out with Susie about the about the panels and everything. Those details have to be worked out legally and with consult consultation. Obviously, she called her CPA. So obviously, she's seen that this is gonna work. I mean, it's pretty tough to get too long. We didn't know about that, but as we gave her money the first time with the, so we straightened that out. We didn't increase her lease. We gave her a break on her heat because of the what happened with the heating system. And it's going to be really interesting to me to see if she would go along with this proposal I was making. And I, it's, it's a win-win. She saves a huge amount of money. They, they said, okay, they, they were into it. Anyway, move on. I'm waiting on code and code assessment on replacing the boilers. I met with them a week ago. He said, Chris said he would be uh, giving me a, a, an estimate pretty shortly. Um, if we chose to go that route, again, I want at least Dark Mechanical or somebody else, one or two more estimates to see where we're at with that. I was very enthralled by watching Hiram Knapp to fix the building, and Chris in the discussion. It's really fun watching people talk Greek and you don't have a clue what they're talking about, but they were into it. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's what I'm doing with that. So quotes for that, quotes for everything before we move forward on anything. Now, um, things that we I see that we need to do immediately. It came to my attention. I should have realized that we had a limb breakdown off of one of those pines behind the dumpster and hit the hit the building last year. Was it last year? Mark was about a year and a half of them. Yeah. yeah I was thinking a year, but okay. Well, the guy from the solar company, when he first looked at it, said, that tree's dead. Hello, Bruce. You think you would have noticed it? But 
what I'm driving at is that tree is pointing right at the, right at the building. So I'm recommending that we get those two pines down. We can talk about that. I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, well, I got a question for you. If they were cut down into sections, can the wheeled excavator work that and put it in a pile so they can burn it? Da, da, da. Very okay. Um, so the only thing I have to do, if you're all into it, is make an arrangement to get those damn things down because one, it's just a matter of time. That that, that tree is not in a good, good 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 way. And what started all this is those trees would cover potential solar gain. There's two there, and then there's a cherry tree out in the field a little bit that was interfering with the solar gain. Getting a little ahead of ourselves with that. But the pines we should consider um, doing something about because um, I really don't want to see that pine on the side of the building after what we've done to it. Um, okay, next up, I did that. Okay, that. Um, two other things. I mentioned you last time about the mold in the basement. I haven't done it yet, but I'd like to look at the cost of one or two dehydrators. Dehumidifiers. What did I say? Dehydrator. Oh, I wrote down dehydrator. That's what used as my food. <laughs> I don't want it. Oh, that's how so bad I am. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get your prices. <laughs> I'll get your price and we can talk about it down the road. This is not a tear. I'm just talking about the expenses. I'm seeing that we should consider it, the work that we should do. The second thing, and I'm waiting for Mark Onion, the electrician, to call me back again, that we've already been in, I've been in consultation with him about the heat pumps and doing the lighting on the building, changing them to LEDs. I know you all are going to want an idea of, of numbers, and I don't have dollars, but I will sort of, shortly shortly, but this is under the incidental purchase part of the purchase policy. So we're not spending $7,000 or anything like that. It's going to be over a grand, but it's not going to be anything like that. So I need to, again, I need to tighten that up and make a proposal to you all. It's, we think it's going to cost between X amount and X amount. This is what we're going to do, so on and so forth. And then you, you all can badger me on what I didn't do and we can agree upon it. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? No. Okay. Is uh, Mark on the vendors? Pardon me? Mark. Well, oh, glad you brought that up because I uh, know he's not. Should he be? I should he be? He has you know, insurance. It's, it's funny, this vendor list is not really a list of everybody that we use in town. It's for Permanent emergency people. calls. If, if we have uh, and we have to contact somebody very quickly, they should be the ones on, a, on an emergency list. Mm -hmm. okay. But we have electricians on, you know, for emergency, we have more. Yeah, you have right. license. Right. But, you know, we can, it's a living document. It can be changed, but okay. it's not just a list of every vendor we use. Okay, so I can hire him for incidental purchase as long as we agree upon it. And he does have insurance because I've already asked him. So he, he's seven, at this point, he's working on summer retired. These a couple of days a week, and we've already done quite a bit. And this has to be a little bit in consultation, not to get off the land too much, with the daycare in terms of the lighting and how, what makes them happy and how that works in, in light of everything. In light of everything. Um, okay. Sam has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, on the infrastructure money. Yes. And looking at the way it was. I'm just thinking you're doing a wonderful job and I really appreciate it as a member on the board with you and as a citizen, all those look angles you're looking at on this. Uh, is the fact that it is town owned but used commercially, leased to someone, does that affect the ability or the amount to get money from the infrastructure as it opposed to being town saying. office furnace? I yeah, I, I don't know if that is I don't enough. know, and I doubt it. I don't know if I'm right. Okay. But I doubt it. But you will keep checking it. Oh, yeah. Uh, the way it was expressed in that uh, legislative report was this is money for municipalities and and schools. Daycares weren't rep represented in that, but that's what they mean. But that has to be shook out. I have to get to the details of it. But I'm, I'm fortunate in that I've got that real good relationship with Chris Greenwood. And I can make
make sure he also made a point about something that I need to call him back about. That was at the very tail end of our conversation. It has nothing to do with this, but it had to do with getting air into the building. The air, air exchangers. And I didn't follow up with them, but I'm going to get back to that, that because I want to know about our legality as to whether we have to have those air to air exchangers going. You know what I'm talking about? The one in the upstairs, the one in the downstairs. Well, I know Jordan Dano, who is a, was a nurse, and she was involved with a lot of ongoing work. I think it was the high school. It might have been the elementary schools as well. And there, is, there was a requirement because it was a, a school scenario. Yeah. Where there was required a certain amount of air, air exchange to meet the COVID standards. And uh, I, it's a good point that you're bringing up. Is it, does it also apply to daycare? Yeah, I don't know. So that's a question for infrastructure that would be also interesting to know. Mm -hmm. And you and I discussed this, I think, a little while ago. It had to do with the amount of kids in the daycare for something. I think. That was the water. Correct. And if and they met the criteria, so we had to we had to be good boys and girls and take care of their their water. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, now all this being done, and I I was I gave them specifics. I'm talking about Susie and Olivia about what I wanted to do with weatherization, <laughs> the capping of the ceiling. I gave them a grand what I what I found, what I'm interested in doing, the lighting and so on. And I also asked them if they felt that they lost business because of what happened with the heat. And she said, maybe if we did any, not a, a lot that she thought. So, okay. But I, what, why I'm bringing that up is because I think that we're showing them by doing these things that we've already done and maybe starting the lighting that uh, this is important to the, to the entire plan, but it's all important to the relationship with us and them. So um, it shows that we're serious about helping with them with their energy costs. And of course, we're selfishly into it to improve the building. I mean, that's obvious. And, and Olivia knows that. But I've always done it, and May she knows that, in conjunction with, with helping out that daycare as well. Um, I just a minute. Now, Stephanie emailed me the other day and said that she is... Uh, she's the person that runs Susie's now. Olivia really takes care of a bunch of them. She's like the overseer, I guess. I call them honey gum. I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she said she wants to have a little flea market out there on the 14th. And what she's trying to do is raise a little money towards their center garden playground equipment. I would imagine that all that taking down of that other stuff behind the dumpster has something to do with that, but I didn't ask her that. And what they want to do is anybody wants to put a table in there for a $10 donation, can sell whatever they want on the uh, uh, on the tables. May 14th, correct? Uh, May 14th. I think it's 10 to 2, but don't hold me to that. Um, and I, I instructed her to maybe to, to talk to, I, I also cc I think I cc you guys, I cc Julie. Just to see. I said, I said the same thing to, to Olivia, right? To Julie, here's your email. Yeah, and, I, and I told told her to um, to contact Julie, the one who went or for our forum or whatever, to advertise a little bit. Um, okay, that's enough for that. I think I'm just about done. Praise the Lord. So um, I'm working a bit. Don't have a lot of uh, con concrete answers for you, but oh, one more thing. On May, on May 23rd, I got integrated solar coming. He's pretty excited about giving us a, a proposal on the panels. And I'm not stopping with him. So I'll have two proposals. Uh, so also a, um, a solar company by the name of Sunnyside. So I think I'm going to call him too as well. I'm looking if, if, I, if it's necessary and I think we can do a fourth one if I need to, I'll do it. I mean, I want to get everybody's input. And I sit back and listen. You tell me what this place needs. And, I, and then I can judge what I think we're getting out of the production panels, how much uh, production we're getting out of the heat pumps. I've learned a little bit about that. Um, and I won't go any more long-winded on that. I'll tighten that up for the next time. Um, you can see where I'm going with all this. 
Well, thank you very much. A very thorough report. Yes, All right, we're going to move on now to communications. Um, I just want to say I had an email exchange with Stephen Johns from DV Fiber. I asked them again if they have any, any suggested budgetary or per capita uh, requests for fiber networking for phase two. He said he would be getting back to us later on in the year, or later on in the next couple of months. They're working out some, some suggested and some formulas to to determine you know what it is and then this he would be glad to come and meet in person or by zoom to explain the, the situation you talked about the may 14 sunny lane so these little peanuts market day uh, a couple of other pieces of mail we got something from the more free library uh which is a request for donations um i'll pass that around the free library we got a letter from yeah, rescue no inc um, that says, uh, please find the attached agreement for service for the next three years, effective July 1st. The contract page requires a municipal representative signatures and then that to be returned to us by June 30th. Once received, we'll forward a signed copy for your records. As I'm sure you're aware, the town of Brattleboro has decided to drop out of our regional system. This will have a long lasting impact on Rescue Inc. and the regional EMS model. However, we are committed to providing the same exceptional service that you have received for the last 56 years. We invite a select board member of your town to a discussion with our board of trustees on a long-term financial and operational considerations of Brattleboro's decision. And that meeting will be on Thursday, May 19th, 6.30 p.m. at Brattleboro Rescue. We don't have a representative any longer uh, for, for rescue. So um, if anybody is able to go, that would be good. Um, I'm going to sign the contract because it is something that we've done annually. Um, so blue ink as we continue to pay them and print. Did they say what time on the 19th? It's at 6.30 p.m. 541 Canal Street, Rescue Inc. Yeah. on Thursday. Okay. I'll try to make that. Oh, wonderful. All right, so I will leave this with Guy and he can... Um, Send it in and do you know if that in the past has indicated a dollar amount that the town commits to? Yes. And, and there was no rate, there was no change. And next year I think it was going up by 1%. Okay. Um, population of 540. The assessment is $29.50. The total assessment uh, is $15,930 for the year. The monthly invoiced amount will be $1,327.50 for 2022-23. Um, it, it will be in 2023-24. The monthly amount will change from $1,327.50. It will go up to $1,341. And in 2024-25, the uh, assessment is $30.10 per person, and that contract will be for uh, $1,354.50 a month. So, um, and I will let you take a look at this as, yeah, I did sign it, but you can all take a look at that as well. Um, Continuing on, Coda and Coda sent, it says, a dear town office of Brookline, we made it, we persisted through another long, cold New England winter. Thank you for trusting us. <laughs> uh, due to the current world, fuel market instability and global turbulence that is now going on and unpredictable, we have decided to delay the start of our contract season by no. one month. Our hope is that this pause ensures more reasonable pricing for everyone. This means that your regular 10-month contract will now start in July and will be an 11-month contract from July 1st through May 31st, 2023. This adjustment is to help keep budget payments low. If you have a pre-buy or another type of contract, you will receive your new contract in June instead of May. You can expect your 2022-23 contract to arrive in the mail in June. If you have any further questions, please call us with one regards, Casey Coda. I wanted to see that. And this is what we did. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm going to uh, go to pay, put pay orders. Uh, uh, there is no, there was no payroll warrant uh, available 
emailed or in the drawer for us to review. So there is no payroll warrant for tonight. We do have an account payable warrant. I'm going to uh, read the information and pass it around. Um, and because uh, no one has gotten this by email either. So <clears throat> I'll start during the discussion part, I'll let you look at. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make an motion to approve accounts payable warrant number 2243 dated May 4th, 2022 in the amount of 14,000 $763.70. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce for discussion. I'm going to pass it around so you all can take a look at it. Good. How'd you been go going home last time? Uh, not too bad. <laughs> I, I got there eventually. <laughs> Okay, do you want our signature on here? Oh, yeah. I have the motion. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor and seconded. And no further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving payroll warrant? I'm sorry. Uh, 22, 2243. 2243 in the amount of. $14,763 and 70 cents. $14,763 and 14 cents. Four, 70 cents. 70 cents. 70. Uh, oh, you got it? Yep. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Um, set agenda for the regular select board meeting on May 18th to be determined if we're going to have the meeting or postpone it. The only thing I have on my agenda right now is for June purchase policy review for changes. I don't know what else. Oh, we also have to do the paving contracts. Is it, and that has to be, uh, no, that's for the uh, okay. Single. And Mark, go ahead. The, the paving, uh, I'm thinking we should do it up sooner than later, just okay. because they fill in their schedules up for the summer. Okay. And I wouldn't want to miss it, miss out on right. you know, getting somebody in town. So I, if we could get Archie's opinion to answer some of the questions that clarify. Would you reach know, out to Archie? I, I will leave the paving contracts in the select words mailbox okay. and um if you can get archie to come in and sit down with you you have a key and yeah. look over that and yeah. then maybe have archie call or email us uh okay. and and then we could if you want yeah to. because uh i just feel the sooner we can okay say you know pick pick one get it back right uh, it would benefit us through the summer right don't uh, worry you want you want to do a quick board for me when you say, no. oh, no. oh, I said the wrong thing. That's <laughs> another meeting. Now I'm so well, I had just to answer that. No. When well, you want it to... sounds like what you're saying is you, you really, you really can't away. use that 15 days if we want to get on their schedule. So it's sooner than later is the way I interpret it. It would have to be after you know, next week. So, uh, no, but, yeah. oh, unless, unless you could do it before next week. You know. Oh, okay. Well, next, as far as having another select board meeting, do you think you can have Archie look at this tomorrow? Yeah, I can find it. And then we could call a special meeting for Friday. Friday, Friday afternoon. Or yeah, I'll, I'll have him. Take 20 there, minutes. And then we can contact you. And, okay. okay. And, and then we can do a quick special meeting just to review that. 
item. But I have to, somebody's have to call me so I can get an agenda out Great. with Kai. All right, so I'm going to leave that for you. Yeah, okay, that. so maybe a special meeting on Friday, May 6th. Six. If that's all right with the select board, can you find better than others? Okay, we'll see what Archie has to say. Okay, um, all right. I'm flexible. Anything else in that respect? That's all we have. Before we need to adjourn the meeting, I am going to remind everyone that at the beginning I did add that we need to have an executive session um, this, after, this evening to discuss uh, uh, the employment, the establishment of employment and contracts. Uh, and so there's a need at this time to evaluate the need to recent concerns of the position of the treasurer for a town. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session at this time. May I have a second? Uh, uh, uh. Step wait, process. Wait, the motion of ex executive session at this time. The executive session can be held under the provision of Title I, Section 313A3 of Vermont statutes. No votes will be conducted while in executive session. That's step number two. Okay, so what do I do? Step now? number one. The first motion is to find that premature public discussion of the subject oh, yes. would cause the municipality or person to suffer a substantial disadvantage. And it gives an example. So we would then say, whoever well, you make the motion, Go ahead. You all make right. motion. I move to find that premature general public knowledge regarding the town's personnel situation in regard to a resignation, the appointment of someone and um, law that's come to light that would put individuals in the town in an awkward scenario. So uh, I therefore feel that it would be, uh, uh, we enter, we decide that this is of a type of situation that requires uh, us to, to make a, a, a decision prior to going into the executive session that this qualifies as a, um, uh, a situation that we deem to be uh, of um, uh, that's a long sense of, yeah, sense you're of, right. I, sense of nature. It would be a I, okay. That it would be a substantial disadvantage to the town to not have um, a entry into uh, executive session. I second that motion. Sweet. Any discussion? No. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And then the second motion is basically okay. what you said. All right. So the second motion is. Because there's a need to evaluate or discuss recent concerns with the position of the treasurer for the town, I make a motion that we now go into executive session based upon the provisions of Title I, Section 313A3 of the Vermont Statute. No votes will be conducted while in executive session. May I have a second? Second. second. Seconded by Bruce. All those, any discussion? The discussion is Peter, we'll have to contact you tomorrow with the end of the meeting time because we don't expect you or Josh to hang around. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So um, all those in favor of entering into executive session, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The public part of this meeting has been adjourned at 9.24. We'll have a two-minute recess, and then we'll go into executive session. Sure.